Okay, truth be told, I'm not too bothered about seeing an all new Dante. He wasn't exactly the most cherished video game character in my heart, and the original series was a getting a bit absurd and repetitive and a bit, well, weeaboo. While I'd rather have Capcom give another franchise of theirs the reboot, um, boot? <coughs> Resident Evil. <coughs> or maybe not cancelled their Strider reboot, I wasn't too adverse to seeing an all new Devil May Cry. I mean, for crying out loud, people, it's a bunch of polygons and a different wig. What are you all spurging on about it? Not a million years. Anyhow, Dunk Devil May Cry evolves around Dante and his twin brother Virgil. Half angel, half demon beings out to revenge the murder of their mother and imprisonment of their father from the villain out the getaway. The game is also made by Ninja Theory, so the fact that Andy Serkis doesn't appear in this game must have taken him quite some restraining. Now I have played all four previous Devil May Cries, five of you count that Dante's Awakening edition of three. I even bought the original PS2 the day it came out, and I never really enjoyed them. Mainly because they're button bashers, and my idea of having a good time isn't trying to forcibly give yourself carpal tunnel. However, I did find myself enjoying Dunk more than its predecessors, possibly as the attacks felt more powerful this time and I didn't need to constantly hammer the buttons as much, or the fact it's more broken up with a lot more platformy segments now, which is more of a Ninja Theory thing. It's practically a sequel to Enslaved than a reboot of Devil May Cry. Again, it's probably the lack of Andy Circus that did that. Of course it still has the regular Devil May Cry staples, such as the double backing mansion levels and the guns that do as much damage to your enemies as flicking rolled up bits of tissue paper. And it borrows areas from other games outside of Devil May Cry too, like those other worldy levels with bits of pavement floating in the air. As there seems to be some kind of unwritten law that every bloody game nowadays has to have bits of floating pavement in them now. Dante also has two different versions of Whip to pull himself around levels now. Absolutely no idea what the point of making two separate whips was, but if it never worked in Zelda, why would it work here? It's just unnecessary button combinations to make it feel more padded out than it is. But overall, Dump Could Ever May Cry is a nice coat of paint for a tired series. It's far more forgiving in its difficulty than previous entries, so it makes an excellent starting point for people new to this series. But it doesn't really shake the boat too much that fanboys will hate the new direction. Which can be taken as either a good thing or a bad thing. It's not exactly the most conclusive way to wrap up a review, but there you go. 